Today is uh, February 17th, Sunday, 18th. We're at the Ironman uh, Expo, and I'm supposed to do a signing and a seminar today. So we're scheduled from 11 to 1, and then we'll do a seminar from 3.30 to, uh, I think we're scheduled to about 4.30. I really don't know what goes on here. I forget. Last time I was here was 2004. Doing an appearance here. I competed. I won the show in 2003. So. Looking real good, though, Jack. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Do I need a pass to get in? Hey, guys. I don't have, I don't have one. I'm, uh, I'm doing a seminar here. Do I need a badge? Well, get your badge. Get back to the back there. They'll give you something. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Hey, guys. Good seeing you. Hey, man. Can get a picture with you real quick? Yeah, no problem. Hey, buddy. What's up? I was wondering what this shirt was. I saw someone wearing it yesterday. Thanks, man. What's up, man? Went to our school, man. Colton, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, man. How's things out there? Oh, awesome. Well, I already graduated. Yeah, but... yeah. Hey, where am I going, Mitch? You know? David should be. I don't know, but he left. Get hey, where's the weeder booth at? Where is it? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Dave, you took off. I didn't know where you went. I'm standing around. Hey, now, I know you're not going to put me on the DVD, okay, Mitz? What's that? Oh, I feel bad. Yeah, my fiance. Okay, so uh, we got all these are free. No, you're not gonna put me on the DVD. Yeah. I thought. I'll show you take a card to the. I'm not charging you guys for pictures. Oh, you're gonna get a beanie? I saw that stuff in the like where you were at, was it like two years ago? Yeah. Year? Where you are now, it's like it's a big jump. Yeah. How much how much was it? Name. Eddie. Eddie. E D D I E. Yeah. I've been uh, seeing you in the magazines, but now I see you in person. <laughs> Impressive or no? Of course. Okay. <laughs> see that? I'm impressive, even in person. Yeah. The, the, the upper one. This one right here. The other one. Trying to get my diet down, but that's the hardest part for me. Why? It's uh, after you eat seven meals. Do you like eating good or do you eat bad? Um, I like eating healthy. It's a lot of protein. You're going to force feed yourself. I try to eat every two hours. You're not in it. Oh, See you there, man. You're going to fast metabolism. You're going to eat a lot. What's that? Christian or Hebrew? How do you spell that? What's, well, how is, what is it? Christian. Christian. Yeah, Christian. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Christian. Is it nice to be in some warm weather? Oh, so nice. God, not being a sick man, it's really cool. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're trying. Oh, I think I'll open up there. One more for you. <laughs> Thank 
きこれ見えないで Thank you. なしなしなし。Thank you. R A C H E L. I told Robin, guess Robin does not have to do it. I'm going 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 to do it. It's an honor, man. Thanks a lot. Who is this guy? Jay Cutler, Chris Cormier. To the I'm, from, I'm, I'm from, from Maine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I want to, hey, I want to congratulate yeah, man, you. Man, you got the high tech shit. Took him off. I want to congratulate you on winning the Mr. <laughs> Olympia. Guys. See y'all got a look. Who is the picture of you, though, dude? It's our magazine. It's oh, okay. Magazine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jay, will you sponsor the junior yeah, cast? I got a really good guest poser. It's Jay <laughs> Cutler. All right. Two, three. Thank you. Thank you. One, two, three. Jay, hold it down. One more. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jenny. Is this the winner of the next Arnold Classic <laughs> Women's Bodybuilding Championship right here? In how many weeks? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> Can I get one of you, Jay? Yeah. Thanks, Andrew, nice to meet you, buddy. Jenny, where are we going? That lady right there. It's actually one. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Get it? Awesome. Okay. Get it going, awesome. All right. Thank, take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. So how how uh, how much time do we have? <laughs> so uh, we had a pretty successful day at the at the expo. We lined up for about two hours there, and uh, now heading over to the yard house to grab some food and fuel a little bit. And then we'll head over to the seminar for uh, three thirty. And uh, speak there for about an hour, hour and a half, take some pictures of some people, and uh, wrap up the Ironman uh, weekend. So, let's take it a little food now and uh, relax a little bit. It's been uh, hectic all day taking pictures and stuff. So, we'll be ready to eat here and, uh, and head back. How much time we got? Here we go again, uh, right here, uh, your host, Max Handy Makaya from 97.1, the FM Talk Station. And we're here with Jay Cutter, Cutter Live, from the Expo at the Pasadena Convention Center. So if what is your secret? What would you say to everybody that's listening today to lose body fat and gain muscle? If you put it into a couple of sentences. Uh, you know, know, eat right, you know, train at least uh, three to five times a, a week. 
and um, you know, stay in the fitness lifestyle, and that's how you'll create the body that you, you shoot to, to have. And uh, you know, it's 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 just a long road, and you know, you're not going to see any uh, real improvement on your body. It, you know, in, in three weeks of consistency, you know, your body starts to roll, and, and you notice a few changes in a few months. But you know, the changes can come sudden. They can come very slowly, so it's uh, it's just a long process. Well, I can tell. I stopped before Jerry to buy the or orange ruffle. Yes. The fish, and I know that uh, it's really helping to my staffing. It's really inspired me and uh, in all the, the bodybuilding and all the fitness building and stuff. It, it's, it's great, guys. It's a great inspiration. It's inspired us. Give you a hand, guys. Give you a hand to show it up. Thank you. His, his, uh, his best thing was uh, the orange ruffle topic of course that's like I eat five pounds a day on my pre-contest diet and you know by the end of my diet in 16 weeks I'm real sick eating fish you know I, I don't really eat much fish in the off season but it definitely helps thin your skin and, and get your leaner look to your physique. Well, about that, that's so let's talk about the products that every single person right here should be taking the functionality of what products they should take. What do you recommend? I mean if we mention supplements I mean like I said I, I eat upwards of eight to ten meals a day so I'm getting a lot of uh, nutritional value just from the foods that I'm eating, but as far as supplementation, I think the most important things, of course, are going to be a multivitamin mineral complex, you know, which, you know, you can take a liquid or, or a pill or capsule form. Uh, I suggest glutamine, which helps with recovery. Uh, I'm big on creatine for actually building muscle because it will help you uh, retain water in the muscle, give you that swole look and also keep up strength and endurance. Um, you know, protein, like, you know, I, I consider all these things, uh, you know, protein, carbohydrates, uh, fats, also your, your, uh, your supplements. Okay, so let's give you a hand, and thank you so much, Jay, for, for being a part of our team. Go ahead and get your body fat, and your body fat measure. Thank you, guys. All right, thank you again. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's clear out the hall, guys. Thank you. Let's give a big round of applause, courtesy of Weeder Publications, the new Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler. How's it going, guys? I know everyone's probably tired. They've been walking around all weekend. I just drove in from Vegas yesterday, so. You know, thank you guys for coming out here today. And uh, I know I'm kind of at the end of the weekend here. And when, uh, when you know, Iron Man Magazine asked me to come out this year, it was... Uh, you know, it's kind of special for me. You know, I had all these professional wins, Arnold Classics, you know, Knight of Champions. But definitely that night at the Mr. Olympia was probably the greatest moment probably of my life when I, when I won that title. Because the way I won, you know, it being, you know, the record-breaking year, Coleman was going for his ninth, and, and everyone was telling me, you know, he don't have a shot, you know, he's just going to, you know, win his ninth and he'll retire. And... uh it didn't happen. I, st I stuck to my guns and I came in strong for the competition and, and uh, he slipped up and, you know, I grabbed the title and, and won, uh, you know, my first Mr. Olympia and the crowd accepted it with a standing ovation. They stayed and I talked and they stayed and I didn't know what else to say, actually. Some of you guys are probably there. It was, uh, you know, one of the greatest moments, probably the greatest moment in bodybuilding history. So I'm, I'm really glad to be part of that. And uh, I'm glad to be here speaking in front of you guys today. So uh, right now I'm living in Las Vegas. I've been there for about four years. I'm originally from Massachusetts. I uh, grew up in central Massachusetts, small town, Worcester, Worcester County, which a lot of you probably don't know where Worcester is, but uh, it's, I grew up on a farm, actually, a uh, town of 6,000 people. I'm, I'm the youngest of seven kids, three brothers, three sisters, none of them weight train. I'm the only one. So there's no one bigger than me in my family. <laughs> uh, why I started weight training? I, I fell in love with, you know, the pictures in the bodybuilding magazines. Chris Dickerson, Mr. Olympia, was the first bodybuilder I actually saw. And I told my brother, who was, was about 12 years older than me, I said, I want to look like this guy. And he looked at me and says, are you crazy? He said, why would you want to look like that? The guy's got, like, muscles in his feet. I said, well, that's how I want to look, too. <laughs> I do have muscles in my feet, too. <laughs> I probably have the ugliest feet alive. Fred, Flint Fred Flintstone feet, they call me. Uh, so 
I knew I didn't want to work on the farm my whole life. My brothers actually did concrete work. So I was forced to actually work a lot. I started working at about 11 years old. I spent my uh, school vacations, weekends, after school working in the family business. And I think that's really what gave me the backbone of what it takes to, to be a, a top bodybuilder nowadays is the discipline to get up every day and do that because I hated it. I used to pray every morning to please get me through this day because I hated it so much. And I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do my whole life. I mean, I had a decision, you know, it was, seemed to be what everyone did back where I grew up. You know, they worked on farms, worked construction. So I decided to join the gym my 18th birthday to pursue my dream to be bigger. And I didn't realize it would come so quickly. I put on about 50 pounds in my first year of training. I was going to college actually to pursue, to pursue a degree in criminal justice. I wanted to be a police officer. So I thought, okay, I'm going to be a cop. I got to be kind of jacked up, you know? <laughs> so started training and I'd go, in, go home between classes. I would eat my way to sleep. I remember I just had a lot of time to kill, which I wasn't used to because I was used to working in the family business. So I was going to college and I was working part-time security. I always seemed to pick the, the part-time jobs that allowed me to be able to eat. I remember when I'd go on my security job, I'd, I'd have my, my Jeep at the time and I was guarding this building and I said, okay, how can I, how can I work this so I can get all my meals and everything? So I remember I used to bring an extension cord with me to work and I'd you know, park my Jeep in the corner in the parking lot and I'd plug an extension cord into the wall and I had a microwave a TV, a VCR, and a heater all plugged into my extension cord. And I'd sit in my Jeep and I'd eat meals and watch movies. And then once the, guy, the supervisor would come, I'd have to like stash all my stuff. I'd put a blanket over it and pretend I'm walking around a lot. And uh, needless to say, that job ended. And uh, I moved on to the golf course job. Probably to this day, my favorite job besides being a professional bodybuilder. So I'd get out there on, on the golf course. They'd say, oh, I think you're going to mow greens by hands this, mor this morning. And I'd say, no, I'm not. And at the time, I was about 240. So they'd say, OK, you're not going to mow greens this morning by hand. You're going to have to ride the tractor. I said, OK, that's more like it. <laughs> so I'd bring my cooler. I'd strap my cooler onto the machine. And I'd head out on the golf course about 4.30 in the morning, wait for the sun to come up, find a nice place to park my machine, and I'd eat my meals for the day. So that was how I gained most of my weight very quickly, is I just ate like crazy. I had everything I could, mainly chicken and pasta. And I was in the gym training. I had a lot of people approach me. They said, oh, you should be a bodybuilder. I said, all right, you know, I'm starting to get a physique. I should do that. So I competed in a local show, placed second, my first contest, and uh, the rest is kind of history. I became a teenage national champion at 19, best in the country. Actually, lost the overall title to a guy named Branch Warren, a lot of you guys are familiar with. He beat me in the overall. He was still a lot smaller than me, but <laughs> he still beat me because he was better conditioned. But, uh, that was the point where I said, okay, I'm gonna pursue my life as a professional bodybuilder. So I took a trip to California, watched a lot of guys train and kind of learned. I sat, read a lot of magazines, read a lot of books, did as much research as I could to try to find, you know, the best knowledge I could. And came back, won the tournament champions at 22, which is a show here. I actually flew all the way from Massachusetts. You know, financing my way along the way, I didn't have much money. You know, I remember driving, you know, my beat up car to the gym and I didn't care as long as I could afford my food for the day and, and be able to train. And, you know, I won that tournament of champions in 1995. And that's where I basically hit kind of the big time. I landed my first cover of Muscle and Fitness. I met, uh, you know, the father of bodybuilding, Joe Weider. He offered me a contract and uh, here I am starting to make money in what I love to do. So I earned my professional status in 96 and Moved on from there and, of course, you know, won, you know, three Arnold Classics, Knight of Champions, you know, run up at the Olympia. I hate to say four times because it's, it's very frustrating for me, but 
Luckily, it wasn't five, and uh, now, you know, holding the ultimate title. So how I got there, I mean, it was through a lot of trial and error. I mean, even as a professional bodybuilder, a lot of you guys must think, well, you know, Jay Cutler's at the top of, the, top of his game. He must know his body inside and out, but that's, no, that's very far from the truth. Every year, we actually prepare truly uh, a different way. Um, there's been a lot of shows where I've eaten all sorts of carbohydrates, all sorts of proteins. I've done no cardio. I've done three hours of cardio. The last couple of years is really kind of where I landed my place in, in what I do for preparation. 2005, 2006, Mr. Olympia. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm going to talk about a little bit with my approach with my training and my diet. Um, because it seems to be what's, what's holding me steady on top right now. When I was here in 2004, I was, you know, getting up in the middle of the night, doing cardiovascular. Any of you guys here from my 2004 seminar? So I was doing a crazy thing to win that Arnold Classic that year. I was trying to trick my body into doing different things. But now I'm basically living, you know, somewhat of a normal life. I, I hate to call bodybuilding normal because it really isn't. And uh, I eat, right now I'm in the off season. I eat anywhere between eight to 10 meals a day. I eat every two hours. I'm trying to get in about f between 400 and 450 grams of protein. I weigh almost 300 pounds. I'm 295 today. I compete about 270 for the contest. And my carbohydrates, range average between 800 to 1200 carbs a day which seems like an outrageous amount but for my body weight is that a lot yeah. that's all right you can laugh dude <laughs> i laughed at your outfit when you came in <laughs> uh but i'm a big big believer in carbohydrates for getting big i mean right now you know i'm, I'm pretty lean condition i've actually been doing cardio at least three times a week, half hour in the morning on empty stomach. And I'm weight training at least, you know, five days, six days a week. Right now I'm kind of listening to my body, just doing at least one to two body parts a day. I train sometimes twice a day, once a day. It just depends on my schedule. I travel every weekend, so it's very, very difficult. But the routine I suggest to everyone is train each body part literally probably, you know, at least five, uh, once every five to seven days, okay? Somebody's trained, you know, each body part twice a week, but I've always trained each body part once every five to seven days. And I find the best result for that. I think you need at least 72 hours rest between body parts. So if you're gonna do your body parts twice, that could work. Um, but I find for me, if I, if I try to train it twice a week, I get overtrained. Even sleeping, I sleep at least eight to 10 hours a day. Sometimes I take naps during a day. Of course, now, you know, with, with my schedule, it's very difficult to do. But I sleep at least eight hours through the night. I get up about six o'clock every morning. I eat, eat at least one meal before I go to the gym. I usually train in the morning, somewhere around 10 o'clock, large body part. And then I go back uh, home, eat a meal, run some errands, eat another meal, then I go back and train again. I try to take five hours in between the body parts if I train twice a day. Okay, you always gotta take at least five hours between body parts. Uh, my, my training's usually only about an hour in the morning, hour in the afternoon. I usually spend an hour in each body part. You really should be able to get through a body part in no more than one hour. You should be able to blast through things in probably 45 minutes. I take anywhere between 40 to 45 to 60 seconds rest between each set. And I perform anywhere between 12 to 15 sets right now per body part. So if I'm gonna do chest, I picked uh, probably about three or four exercises. I do at least three or four sets per exercise, get enough stimulation and get out of the gym and feed it. Okay, right now my body part grouping is goes as, as, as uh, such. It goes um, chest and biceps on one day. I do quads and hamstrings another day. I do back one day on its own. And I do shoulders and triceps and traps on another day. Calves are only done once a week, usually on chest day. I'm a big believer. Everyone says, Jay, you know, I'm trying to get my calves bigger. I still think you should train it like every other body part. I think it should be done, you know, hard and heavy, you know, 10 to 12 repetitions and uh, stretch in between, just go into shock them and then get out of the gym.
And as far as the diet, it's, uh, it's always up and down. Of course, being on the road, like a weekend like today, I probably had about three meals today. So if I told you I'm eating 10, 10 meals today, I'm lying to you. And I basically just on the weekends lose at least 10 pounds. So when I get home on Tuesday, I might be down to 285, but it usually is just water. Every weekend, I guess, suppose I seem to lose the most amount of weight. So it's really hard to judge really by weight what I look like. I kind of go by how my body feels and if I'm taking enough calories. But what I try to focus on is getting all my protein from egg whites, chicken breast. I eat one steak meal a day. I don't eat fish actually in the off season because I hate fish right now. Only when I pre, during my pre-contest diet. Uh, protein shakes. And that seems to be it for protein for me right now. Now as far as carbohydrates, I eat oatmeal, sometimes brown rice, uh, white rice definitely after I train, and sometimes potatoes. I've been doing a new kind of diet, which I did for the Olympia. Some of you guys probably read my articles where I'm focusing on more whole foods, uh, eating for my blood type, which I'm focusing on this, this bread and cereal from Whole Foods is called Ezekiel bread, Ezekiel cereal. Any you guys heard of this? So I'm an O positive blood type, so they say I'm like caveman blood. So I can eat a lot of red meat, and I have to stay away from dairy. They say actually, you know, egg whites really aren't good for me. I still eat egg whites every day. I have my big jug of egg whites I get from Juana's egg whites. And I just throw them in a pan and eat those every day, cook them up, and fry them up in the morning. Average, you know, breakfast for me would be uh, 20 egg whites, two whole eggs, four slices of Ezekiel toast, and one cup of Ezekiel cereal and a cup of black coffee. So right there I'm eating almost 200 carbohydrates just for breakfast alone. Okay, and then uh, the meal, after I train, I'll eat anywhere between 200 to 250 carbohydrates of the cereal, white rice, and then usually a protein shake, at least uh, 50 to 70 grams of protein. So what I shoot for each, each meal is between 50 and 70 grams of protein every meal. So I'll eat around 12 ounces of meat when I eat uh, meat or a protein shake. Uh, 20 egg whites is about 60 grams of protein. and my carbohydrates, I try to take in at least 100 grams of carbs every meal. My biggest meals of the day, of course, are my meal one, which is my pre-workout meal also, and my post-training meal. Those are where I get most of my calories in the day. And then, of course, if I train twice, the post-training meal there also. I use uh, the most amount of calories. So that's why I'm eating, like I mentioned, anywhere between... 800 to 1200 carbohydrates a day. That's what I shoot for. I weigh every meal. I measure out everything. I have a scale at home. I try to weigh every portion and uh, I try to be very, very exact. And that's why I can sit here and tell you time and time again. I mean, I eat the same breakfast, the same foods, the same thing year round, even pre contest. I don't change anything pre contest except the portions. The foods all stay the same. So, if you think, okay, well, Jay, what do you do different from pre-contest to off-season? There really isn't much of a difference, and that's why my physique really doesn't change a whole lot. I don't gain a whole lot of body fat. When I do have to bring the diet in for the contest, the only thing that I will switch up is I will add a lot of fish to my diet. You guys have probably read my articles, probably seen me grocery shopping in my videos and online. I eat five pounds of fish a day and uh, support Costco quite a bit. So that's where I buy a lot of that meat. Like I said, I mentioned, you know, for the Olympia, I was shopping at Whole Foods. That became probably double expensive as it used to be. I was eating a lot of ground chicken breast there, ground turkey, but I always got my fish from Costco. And the best way I found for cooking that fish was outside because we all know what happens when you cook that fish inside. What happens? Stinks up the house, right? Well, my wife, uh, she didn't like her clothes in the closet smelling like fish anymore. 
So I got my big old foreman grill outside. I put it right there next to the neighbor's wall. <laughs> and I cooked that fish right up every morning. Six o'clock. Neighbor stops me when I'm getting the mail in the afternoon. Back on that diet, huh? <laughs> I kind of chuckle on myself, how'd you know? I smell that fish, I like it. I'm said, oh man, this guy is crazy. <laughs> this guy likes fish coming over as well. He's out of his mind. Yeah, the neighbors kind of think I'm a little crazy in my neighborhood. I actually just moved into a new house in Vegas, so I was living in a almost like a retirement area. I didn't know this when I moved to Vegas four years ago. I bought in this complex 60 homes. Thought it was great, you know, guard gate gated community. Started driving around. I'm like, man, I don't see much movement in this uh, this neighborhood. <laughs> Said to my wife, have you met any of the neighbors, you know? I don't see anybody out there. And we start seeing them out there, you know. They're all driving like Cadillacs and Buicks. And uh, they all seem to leave real, real early in the morning and they're in for the rest of the day. And slowly but surely, I realized I was living in a retirement community. <laughs> and I was the youngest guy. And here I was winning all these Arnold Classics, bringing home a Hummer every year. And they're sending me letters saying, you can't park your vehicles outside. I said, what do I do? I got three Hummers. I won from the contest. <laughs> but uh, so slowly they just made me, I sold off the Hummers now. I don't actually drive a Hummer truck anymore. But that was a great experience, when, you know, winning three Arnold Classics. And, you know, Arnold Classics coming up every year. And I do miss actually competing that show right now, you know, just going to focus on the Mr. Olympian. A lot of people ask why. You know, you could probably go to win to, with the Arnold Classic pretty easily, but it's just very hard for me to peak nowadays twice. And uh, I don't want to disappoint the fans and come in on at one show and off at another. But also, you know, my travel schedule, traveling all the time, it's very, very difficult to prep for competition. And I think that's, that's kind of what separates me a lot from the other guys is I'm just very, very dedicated. A lot of you guys probably read my story. You know, Kerry, my wife who uh, we, I've been with for 17 years. We started dating actually on six, on, at 16. I actually told her on my first date, I said, I'm gonna be a professional bodybuilder. And she looked at me like I was crazy. She said, all right, that's cool. But uh, you know, she's really, really supported me and, and given me the focus. I think we all kind of need that backbone when we're trying to succeed at, at certain goals, and especially when I'm trying to become the best bodybuilder in the world and being you know, only 11th Mr. Olympia, it's quite a feat to do and I really never thought it was possible honestly you guys I mean coming from small town you know 6,000 people it's not normal that that produces a Mr. Olympia and what you know this contest this past Olympia proved to me is that really anything can be done I mean I set set my mind forward I said I'm going to try to be the best I can be I was very focused I was very determined a lot of people said I couldn't do it too bad that's, you know, that's part of our sport is a, there's a lot of negative uh, people trying to drag you down. I think it's with a lot of business. But you always have to stay positive and stay focused, and that's what I did. And I, I truly believed in myself once I started winning and I realized that I could become the best, and I did. So we all have certain goals that we shoot out, you know, we set out to do, we, we just, you know, we really not sure of the outcome, but we all have to have the heart and the drive, the determination, the perseverance to just follow through. And, and no matter what the obstacles, you know, fall into your path, you have to learn a way to jump over those and move forward. And I've kind of had those, those experiences and uh, being up here in front of you guys, it's like, you know, you guys can accomplish anything. And a lot of you guys probably looking to just, you know, look better yourselves. You're not trying to you know, topple Jay Cutler down off the Mr. Olympia crown. Maybe this guy over here in, <laughs> with the hat, but I don't know if I can stick around that long, bro. <laughs> but we'll see. You keep, keep me on my toes, dude. Uh, but whatever you do in life, I mean, you have to give 100%. And I believe that if you have a dream, you need to follow through with that dream. So... 
you know, with that, I want to open up. I want you guys to ask me a couple questions, whether it be, you know, whatever. Just ask me, you know, whatever you want, and uh, then we'll roll with it, and hopefully you guys can feed off those questions, okay? All right, man, you first. Uh, when I won the Mr. Olympia, I was, I didn't sleep. I still don't sleep, honestly. <laughs> I woke up this morning after being at the show last night, and I remember walking out, I gave the second place award, and, you know, they announced Jay Cutler, you know, new Mr. Olympia, MC Lonnie Teeper, and the crowd, you know, gave their cheers and whatnot, and it brought me back, because that's the last time I really had you know, that crowd behind me on the stage and pro bodybuilding show. And man, I was like, I woke up this morning at seven, I couldn't sleep because I was Mr. Olympia. I remember the next morning after Mr. Olympia contest, I rolled over to my wife and I screamed out, I'm Mr. Olympia. <laughs> and she's like, oh man, I'm so tired. You just put me through 12 weeks of hell and this and that. I said, well, you're Miss Olympia. <laughs> She smiled, you know. What's she gonna do, kick me out of bed? I, I take up the whole bed. But it was, uh, it was, uh, I was in shock. It really didn't hit me. It's something, when you win something that big, it's your dream your whole life, you can't take it all in in that moment. I mean, I was just like, I can't believe it, I won. But it's still, I'm still on the clouds with it. You know, I'm still down to reality, like, you know, I'm training to, to fight, you know, keep that title, but I'm still, you know, walking in the clouds from that. It's truly, truly amazing. So, I played high school football. I played fullback defensive tackle. I was a decent player. I actually broke my kneecap, actually, when I was a junior. I wore a cast from my hip all the way to my ankle. But I really wasn't a, a big... I just really didn't like team sports that much because I hated losing because of someone else. And that's what I think bodybuilding is so great is it's an individual sport. And when you lose, you lose kind of on your own, especially nowadays. But it definitely gave me something that I have in bodybuilding, that drive and you know that work ethic, like I mentioned, even growing up on the farm. You know, it's all part of that. My background is, is what's given me, I think, the edge. Being 33 years old now, this year, I feel I definitely have, I think, two solid years left. 35, 36, I can say. I'm not really going to say when I'm going to retire because that's a mistake. But I will retire when I can't do any more good for the sport of bodybuilding on a competitive side. I feel I'm going to be able to represent bodybuilding even once I retire. That's my goal. But when I'm not to be able to perform as Mr. Olympia, I mean, obviously, that's the time to step away. I was 274 on Friday. It was a two-day show this year. I was 274 on Friday, and I was 267 when I won on Saturday night. And this year, I don't know. It's hard to really say. Right now, I said I'm 295. I'll be 285 by Tuesday when I get home. Uh, you know, I think I'm in better shape last year at this body weight than I, than I was, and I'm not trying to come in bigger. I'm just trying to come in better, which I think for me is just gonna be adding more detail to my physique. I need to be better conditioned. You know, we're not perfect. I have some body parts I wanna improve, mainly my quads and my arms, upper chest, you know, just but, you know, bring more back condition and, uh, and hopefully uh, run with it in 07. Uh, Ronnie told me on stage, he said, you beat me, dude. <laughs> you won. And I didn't know what to say, you know. But when I won the title, when they announced my name as the winner, you guys have probably seen it, you know, I raised my hand, but my first thought was actually to raise Ronnie Coleman's hand because of the great champion he is. He was an eight-time winner. You know, we battled it out for, uh, f you know, four of those where I was runner-up, and... I have a great amount of respect for Ronnie Coleman. Great, great champion. Coming back this year, trying to be stronger than ever. Uh, but I feel I'm coming into my own and I feel very confident. Very confident, actually more confident than I've ever been. 
to retain the title in 07. Yeah, Jay, uh, it's no secret, even though he denied it, Ronnie had accrued some injuries through the years of training. He was 42 last year. He's definitely coming back. He's going to be 43. Uh, do you feel confident that you're not going to have to face the best of Ronnie Coleman anymore? Um, well, you know, you being an expert, too, I think we can agree that at 43 years old, it's very difficult to, to be your best ever. I mean, I think that we all reach certain points of our career that we're all the time best. I mean, I was haunted by 2001 where people think that was my best ever. It could have been. You know, I may never see that again. But the point is I'm the champ today, and it really doesn't matter in the end of the day whether you look as good as you ever did. It really depends on how the other guys come and what package they bring. And that's the thing about bodybuilding where, you know, we train all year for that one moment that one 15 minutes of what it takes to be the best and everyone can slip up I mean people would say that Ronnie wasn't his best this year and that's why I won if that's how it is that's how it is I'm the champ I also know that, that a lot of fans don't know what Jay had to go through a couple weeks prior to the, the Mr. Olympia he became very sick and it, it, did, did it ever concern you going into the show, like, am I even going to be able to make it? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, Lonnie's referring to, I did get sick before the contest. I lost actually 20 pounds. I was 290 pounds. I fell to 270 pounds um, about 12 days before the competition. I was uh, running on IVs daily and trying to replenish my body with, with branch chain aminos and fluids because I was... Uh, running to the toilet constantly and I couldn't hold anything in, I lost my appetite. But it concerned me a lot, I cried, you know, I honestly cried to my wife and I said, I can't believe the best year, there was so much, you know, everyone had seen what I looked like, you know, two weeks prior and there was so much talk like, I think this is the year Jay's gonna do it. When you lose 20 pounds in two days, you really don't know, you know, what's gonna happen. I said, please, you know, please get me to this contest I just want to get there, you know, I have so much riding on the show, not only, you know, for myself, but, you know, from the fans and also the sponsors and whatnot. It's very, very crucial when you compete only once a year. You can only prove yourself that one time. So it did concern me, but, you know, fortunately, you know, God was on my side. I made it to the competition. I, I looked, you know, best I looked in years, if not ever. And, uh, you know, we won the title. So I think this year, like I said, my confidence is that I will not get sick and I will bring in a better package than 2006. Um, over the years, you know, Gunter and I were pretty tight. You know, Chris Cormier was a great rivalry. Ronnie Coleman, believe it or not, Ronnie Coleman, I'll actually tell you guys a little story. I won my first professional show in the year 2000, Night of Champions. And I went through prejudging and, you know, in professional bodybuilding, it's like one of these things, you know, it's not. It's not done until you get that trophy in hand at the night show and they supposedly, you know, they judge the night show and whatnot. Coleman called me after prejudging and said, congratulations. I said, well, for what? He said, you won. I said, well, what do you mean? The show isn't over yet. He said, oh, you won, bud, you won. And I thought that was really cool because he was, let's see, 2000, he was two-time Mr. Olympia at that point. So I thought that was really cool. So we always had kind of that that friendship, you know, we traveled a lot together, and that, especially over the past few years, you know, 2003 started the hype when Gunter beat him in 02. We, him, Gunter, and myself were all booked for guest appearances together. It was pretty awesome. It was probably the most exciting year of my bodybuilding career, traveling, doing guest appearances, so much hype leading up to that contest. Uh, right now, probably I'm closest to uh, the newest guy, Phil Heath. Uh, he's, he's probably uh, the closest, I would say, um, that I talked to a lot. Mark Dugdale is a good friend of mine in the bodybuilding scene. I honestly gave up my whole life to pursue bodybuilding. I gave up family functions. I gave up a social life. I sat in on my 21st birthday, birthday and, and I didn't celebrate. I basically just lived for bodybuilding. I didn't live as, as a kid as much. Do I regret it? Not really because those are the years you know you're out partying with friends, drinking, that's the kind of stuff. I never been a drinker, never been a partier. I was just very focused, I think, to achieve a certain goal. 
you have to give up a lot of things in life. And usually those kind of things, you know, include the social life. I did have to give up a lot of friends. And the friends that I did have were like, when I was off season, not training for a show, you know, we socialize once, once in a while. Then I start getting ready for a show and I disappear. They'd be like, what, what happened to this guy? I wouldn't pick up the phone. I wouldn't call anyone. I mean, I put myself in a box training for the competition and I become very focused. And sometimes, you know, people don't understand that, but people that have been around me for years, my closest friends actually realize that it's a very serious time when I get ready for the shows. Nowadays, it's not as bad as it used to be because I realize that I still have to run a business. What I didn't realize when I first started bodybuilding is there is a business side to it. You know, I run my website, book an appearance as I handle a lot, a lot of my own business. And it becomes very, very difficult to stay hidden in that box. You still need to get out there and then uh, speak on the phone. So even though I do hate the telephone, I, I do have to get on the phone daily. Um, but so they're kind of kicking me to wrap this thing up a little bit. I'm sorry I kind of dragged it on with different topics here. But, you know, what I want to finish with you guys, I, I do do appreciate the support and I appreciate the questions. I wish I could actually stay here and talk to you guys all day. I, I do answer my own emails. You can email me to jcutler.com. A lot of you guys probably wrote to me and I do. You guys are the reason that I'm here. I do realize that I need your support. The sport needs your support. We sit here and talk about how we can continue to make the sport bigger and better. Hey, you know what? We're all here. You guys are here for a reason. But there's going to be things along the way. I'm just like a normal person. We all go through different paths in life. And I'll have some dilemma when I go home back to Vegas this week. You know, I'll be uh, cleaning up my, my dog poop in the backyard and all that <laughs> normal stuff. I do do that still just because I'm Mr. Olympia doesn't mean I have the means doing that. And uh, I appreciate your support. So I wish you all the best. Hey, shoot a post. Yeah. Jay, stay humble and approachable as you are. Thank you, guys. Which will be out sometime. In wow! <laughs> You gotta get to the middle. The best seats are in the middle. Those are two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> get it, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. All right, thank you all for coming to this year's Mid Expo. Okay. Sorry, we're gonna have to ask everybody to leave now. <laughs> Thank you.